So after reading some of the comments yesterday on my video about optimizing images in Node.js, I came to a realization that I probably should not be doing image optimization, or at least we're trying to reduce the file size myself on my own Node server. And really I should be pushing that to a separate service that I'm using to resize the images themselves. So I kind of wanted to talk about in this video how I'm going about handling images right now in Saffron the process of handling user upload images, serving those images, and then some of the ways I'm thinking about changing it in the future, and some suggestions I would have if I were to start over and if you're trying to do something similar to this. So to start off, I figured it would be good to, to kind of just talk about some of the requirements that Saffron has and some of the things that I'm thinking about when trying to decide what is the best solution to handle images so if you don't have similar problems or similar things matter to you, you may want to pick slightly different solutions. Uh, but here are a few things that are I'm thinking about and they're specific kind of to Saffron, uh, but are kind of generic if you're building an app like this. So the first one is Saffron is both a website and a React Native app, or at least we have both. So we need to find or we need a solution that is able to handle images from both sources and uh, both upload from both sources and both serve images to both those sources. And that also kind of has to do with resizing images at different screen sizes. The app is wildly smaller than a big desktop computer, um, but even across the app itself. So for example, on the website, if we go over to the search, the images over here are much smaller compared to the big image that we have here. So we don't necessarily have to serve like 20 so there's like 20 search results or something in this list we don't necessarily need to serve 20 images of this size we can just serve this size image when someone clicks on an image uh, comparatively uh, the other thing that i'm looking at is uh, whatever i choose to handle images in the process of that i don't want it to be too pricey um, and so that's going to be a concern the other thing is at the same token i'm willing to pay some money to have image handling taking care of for me. And I'm going to talk about more about what that means. Um, basically, the two concerns I have is resizing and compression or loading fast, which we'll get to in a second. Um, but I'm willing to, I guess, offload the work of that to someone else um, and pay some money for that if I don't have to spend the time slash complexity to code it myself. So I'm also going to look at how much time would it take to make my own solution? How much time would it take for me to integrate like an existing solution? Um, and then lastly is I want the images to load quickly on both the website and the app. So being able to resize is important, but also serving stuff from like a CDN to make it quick and possibly being able to compress the images at a certain size. But also with the compression, I do want the images to look really sharp for food. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm not degrading the experience by trying to compress and optimize the size of the images too much. I still want it to be like a crisp image. And so that's something I may, I might be able to do a better job of, which I'm going to talk more of later in the video. But anyway, with that said, originally what I did on Saffron is we had this form just on the website where you can upload a photo. So you just upload a photo. Uh, from your computer and then I would resize it on I guess just using a canvas on the website on the client side and then I would upload that to my server well not to the server to uh, S3 AWS and so that's what I did at first but we didn't have a I guess application or sorry a react native app at that point so we didn't even need to think about that um, but then you can't really do as great of compression slash resizing on React Native, it's just not as good um, that I noticed. So as soon as we started the app, it really didn't make sense. Also, just like being able to serve images at different sizes was harder to do just serving things from S3. You'd either have to upload multiple images at different sizes, and it was starting to get to a point where like it's really not worth it. So uh, when that happened, I was like, all right, and also at that point, I was also uh, using Cloudflare to sit in front of 
uh, S3, and so I would get the CDN, so the images would still load decently fast because they're served from that. Um, but we could still uh, resize better. And uh, so what I did recently was introduce Imagix in front of this. So this is what I'm currently have been using. Um, and this is kind of a service like Cloudinary, which I'm going to kind of talk more about both of those and why I'm using this in a second. Uh, but this, what this allows it to do is it also will act as a CDN, but I can also resize the images to the exact size that I need, which is important. The also the thing that I didn't realize at all is you can have Imagix compress this. The also a huge advantage to something like this is the requirements of your website are constantly going to change. Like uh, this is currently the file size now, or the image size that might change in the future. And so with ImageX or something similar, I tell it what dimensions I want the images and on the server, it resizes the images and sends it back to me. And so being able to use that is very powerful because now I can change the dimensions of my image of any time. And I don't have to worry about resizing a million images. I just request a different image from ImageX. And the big aha moment I had really today when I was reading the comments is I had no idea that I could actually resize or compress images with ImageX. So what I had been doing is I would upload the uh, uh, the image whenever I go over to the form over here to my server. I would optimize it in Node.js. Then I'd send it to S3 and it would be sitting in S3. And then ImageX proxies like kind of sits in front. It acts as a CDN and also resizes the images that it gets from S3. And so I didn't really need this at all. Um, or sorry, I didn't need the optimization piece on my server. Uh, ImageX can actually do that as well. So I had no idea that that was possible. And really, that's another piece that I want to offload. So I'm willing to pay. This is the pricing that they have for it. So it's $3 per thousand images. Uh, it says master images, so it's not actually, it's a little bit different. It's not actually just uh, the image, because it's, whether it's access that month. Um, and then eight cents per gigabyte. So I am paying some money for the amount of images that I'm using. But being able to offload, not having to worry about the size of my images, not having to worry about compressing, optimizing is very nice and all the code around that. So I'm definitely going to offload that over to ImageX's server and not use that right now. So I really like having this. Um, and I went with this option instead of, say, Cloudinary. Um, because I had all my data in S3 before I was looking at one of these two guys to choose between them. And so as far as I'm aware, at least with the free version of Cloudinary, you cannot use like it backed with S3. And also it was going to be a little bit of a like a migration process to go through adding images, um, like the public IDs and whatnot, updating my database to get it to work with Cloudinary. It was a much simpler to just kind of like put on ImageX in the front and then change my one GraphQL resolver, which specifies what the URL should be for the pictures. Um, so it's a little bit more work to migrate over to Cloudinary at this point, so I didn't go with it. Um, and I have no idea pricing-wise which one is better. Um, but as for, as, as for like which one has better support for the features that I needed, both had pretty much all I needed for images. I have ba very basic needs. All I need is resizing and uh, also I like the optimization compression that I realize you can now do. So the, both of those are super nice. So I have basic needs, both of them uh, offer it. Um, Cloudinary uses this credits or uses this credits to determine uh, how many, like how much images you can use. So you get 25 credits, one credit is equal to thousand transformations or one gigabyte of storage or one gigabyte of bandwidth um, so it's kind of a little bit harder to compute how much I would be paying on Cloudinary versus paying on ImageX so it's hard to say but I do know for sure right now because Saffron does not have that much like images total and uh, that much image traffic yet that I would still definitely be able to do it under the Cloudinary plan, whereas in their ImageX, I'm paying, they have like a minimum fee of $10, so I am paying like $10 a month. Um, so I was considering moving over to Cloudinary, but I'm not sure if it's really worth the migration, the development time to move over, because $10 a month also isn't really that much. Um, and 
I was unsure also Cloudinary, uh, kind of like the jumps between plans. I was kind of unsure pricing wise. Like you go from 25 credits to 225 credits. So it seemed like a giant jump between the usages, whereas Imagix was kind of pay as you go. So it kind of felt weird that you kind of would underutilize the plus for a while and you kind of underutilize the advance for a while. It seemed weird there wasn't kind of like an in-between, but maybe I'm missing something and there is. Um, but if I were to kind of like restart and start over, I think I would just like let Cloudinary handle everything. Uh, I wouldn't be paying like $10 a month to Imagex and I'd just be on the Cloudinary free plan and I like that. And also I may still switch to Cloudinary at some point because I believe if I end up going to this version, uh, I can use S3 if I go to $89 a month version. Um, but if I were to start over, I would just choose Cloudinary. So much easier to just offload all the handling of images to them. I'd still be on the free plan for that. And then they would handle transformations, optimizations, storing the images. Because right now that's the other thing is I have, I'm using S3 to store images and I'm using ImageX to proxy and transform stuff. So I'm using two different services. It's kind of nice just to stick it all in Cloudinary and forget about it. Um, so it, my recommendation for you, would just go with Cloudinary. Um, I am still curious though, pricing wise, which one ends up being cheaper. The other nice thing about ImageX is you get infinite number of transformations or at least you don't pay for transformations. Um, I'm not really doing like a bunch of transformations so I'm not sure if this will be a big deal for my particular product but it's good to note anyway that was kind of some of the things I was thinking about uh, with saffron and uploading images so where I see myself going with this is on the react native app and on the website I'm thinking just uploading the raw image whatever the, the user uploads um, to s3 and then have Imagex sit in front of it, resize the images on demand. If I need 800 by 400, use that. Or of course, that was the other thing that uh, I'm still kind of trying to figure out. What's the best size to load in of the image? So right now this is an 800 by 400. But if we were to look at what the actual size of the image that I'm loading, it's actually bigger. And that's... One thing I noticed is if you import the actual size, oh, I guess it's a little bit smaller because the screen is scrunched a little bit. But here I'm loading in 1600 by 1800 pixels, um, which is about double the size of what it should be here. So it looks crisp. One thing I noticed is if I loaded 800 by 400 and I needed 800 by 400 and I was going to display it at that size, that it would be a little blurry. So, uh, or not as crisp if as if you were to uh, get an even, big, even bigger version and let the browser resize it a bit. So I actually even load a little larger than I need for this. Um, but anyway, I'm loading it on demand. Basically, instead of trying to load things or resize things on the client side or on my server, offload all that to a service. Anyway, I'm curious what your guys' thoughts on this. If you have any recommendations on improving this process, do let me know because I'm also experimenting with this and kind of trying to feel it out uh, what the best way to do it. I think this direction is going to work well with just uploading the raw stuff to S3 and then letting like a service like this handle everything else for me and I don't have to worry about all that stuff. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.